Sometimes it just bursts out in the song. So this is where I just told it that. several because they just came up in my hands. Is the banana a bonus or? Well, <laughs> <laughs>
tipping forward, like that's the hard part, right? Good, good. Step by step, longer in the neck. Yeah. I was already different, right? Mm -hmm. You just like went one inch longer in the neck. The stride got one inch longer. Good. Well, the part of your job, which is going to be not an easy task, is to get his neck longer because he goes a little bit on his and we we're talking already this morning about locomotive muscle system versus postural muscle system. And for him, like most Spanish types, they're much more on their postural muscles than they are on their locomotive muscles. Warm bloods are more on their locomotive system and less on their posture. So he's like, one and down, I'm gonna hold myself up inside myself, which makes it go up and down, which is helpful for piazza massage and can pirouettes. Not helpful for a smooth, easy, rolling gait. Easy to sit sometimes. Long, flowy, easy. Good. Half circle left, half circle right. Thinking about that longer neck. Yeah. And for me, first, he might curl up a little bit behind the vertical. But first, you know, I've trained enough of these things and we just went through my staff and I'm like, wow, I've shown like 60 horses and almost 200 Grand Prix's and I've shown at least 50 horses at each level. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. It was like crazy. Like I feel, I feel old. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder my back hurts when I see uh, They didn't fix me all up. I don't hurt. <laughs> and I cried and I feel a lot better. <laughs> but it's like, I'm open to the fact that he might have to go a little bit behind the vertical to find, because the neck, for, like for me, in my practical, I know the books, read all the books, I appreciate the books, but in practicality, I have had a, a, a handful of horses that had to go down first as the neck as an apparatus has to go low until the pole goes below the width. Because the nuchal ligament doesn't get stretched until the pole goes below the wither. Then, and only then, can I open the throat latch. Because that's when the really fine and like double bracket style. Exactly. Suzanne will put the fancy word to what I'm saying. We need to, we need to go in the room and do this. Yeah. Exactly. Good. Longer neck. And then try to teach him with this long neck, right? Because he doesn't always have his abs engaged and he doesn't always have his top neck muscle engaged. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good. Yes. Everyone loves the elasticity and the tempo. because he just gets so up and down. Which again, we're gonna love. When you get out of the warm for your ground free, you're gonna like walk him around to the warm up and you're short and right and you're gonna kick him and he's gonna start yeah, like a freak. And you're gonna be like, good boy. And then you're gonna ask it again and then you're gonna go to a normal warm up. But until then, we don't need pee off in the second level test two yet. So we can feel that. I'm sure. Because <laughs> like, what are you gonna do with this? <laughs> yes, and then he starts to breathe. Now he starts to really connect. Okay, hello. Good, we're getting to something, right? Good, yeah. Good, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Good. Good. Yeah, and his ears are soft, and he's looking at the chili, and he's starting to get really more relaxed, right? Because there's always a sense of hecticness to it and speed. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen. Good. Half circle right, half circle left. Fifteen, sixteen is a little bit where he's at. And now we check on 
comes again to the left. We were just actually talked about it in our apprentice class the other night, so that's why I bit fresh in my mind. I like to like squeeze inside, squeeze outside, give both drive inside leg. Because I like to be like, here's the bit, here's the bit, now you go get it. Here's the bit, here's the bit, go get it. Here's the bit. And sometimes I just gently hold outside and squeeze inside. And then if I start to feel them kind of fit, like feel me, then I ask, like, I present it, can you go get it? I present it, can you go get it? It's a little bit like helping someone stretch their muscle. We we're talking about that at lunch, right? Like someone helping you stretch. They don't just like, you know, they like go to the moment of resistance and then they release it. And then they go to the moment of, so you gotta like present the bit and feel them feel you and then let go and drive with the inside leg because again, the inside foot puts the head down. Good. Round circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Good. We'll do that one more time. Just to make sure our numbers are good. Are you okay? See, I feel like he's speeding up. I don't know if he explained to me. Do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That was your best trot right there. Is that but like I did feel what you meant, like right here. Yeah. He started to release the neck, and he is gonna fall out of bounds because he's used to like I'm moving myself in my postural muscles. And when he starts to release the posture, his locomotive muscles are like, what? You know, like I, I'm not holding myself. So there again, with your knees in the up part of the pose. You want to slow him down or regulate the speed with your abs and your knees, which is also going to pull his back up, which the more his back comes up, the lower and longer his neck can go. But I don't want to free try, right? Like that's where it's a little bit like, good. and when he does that, I would pedal on just the outside right there. Does that make sense? Because they're good, I would feel my inside ring and I would just pet his neck on the on the outside and feel there, I'll get again on the outside ring. To see if you can get him to kind of like chew down. Who who does that? I Off brand of it. Because I want him to release the outside move the ligament, because that's what's responsible for bending. And so I know we always talk about like less left rein in both directions, but when when I ride a horse, I want to feel him follow my inside ring. Right, and like Stacy Westfall would call it like, I need, a, um, I need a soft inside shoulder. Buck Brandon would call it like a soft, easy feel. So it's like, you know, good job, walk in 10 in a second. So it's, it's beautiful, and I love it. Good, even there, it's a better walk, right? Let him, but now he's looking to the right. So now he's, now he's still looking to the right. So let go of the right rein and just feel like inside seat bone, inside leg, inside rein. Can I put, put them on a small circle? Yeah, I try it. And then kind of feel that you can put them on a small circle as if it was like a one rein stop, right? But it's not a one rein stop. But it's like you cannot run away. Ooh, ooh, yes. There. Does that make sense? There. And that's going to be tricky. That's going to be your trickiest thing you do with this horse forever. And the more collected he gets, and the more we like canter out of the walk, the worse the walk is going to get. So that's not going to get easier. That's going to actually get harder. This piece right here. But if we don't ever teach him about experiencing his back, then we're going to deal with that all the way, right? And you see, he's like, you can see how he's uh, his teeth. You know, like when you see someone, it's like going to go this in a meeting, and you see them go this way, and he's going, yeah. like that's what he does with the walk. You see his teeth in his jaw. Yeah, I'm talking about his teeth. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah, that's why it's pulling into his tail into the right. Yes. Yeah. Right, so right Which is why I said give the right ring. Mm -hmm. Which is normally I never say that. More than either. Right, but I but and, and that's interesting because I feel that unlocking of the outside 
what do you call it, front latch, or um, jowl, like that opening of the outside jowl, I feel and want that on my inside ring. That I get like this jowl and he follows my, like I can ride the corner of his inside mouth from my inside foot, inside sequel, inside mouth. That he just like surrenders himself to the, to the outside side. That he fully stretches and lets go. Because what this horse won't do is let go. You know what I mean? Totally. Because if you can let go with the outside, you follow that inside rein, you get very easy. Totally. Well, and you don't have an outside rein if there's no bend. Yeah. So for me, I talk about a lot of times the four channels of trimness, which is like when I first get on the horse, especially when we're in census, you know, I want inside leg to inside rein. So that's left leg to left rein. I want right leg to right rein, almost more important because most horses are short left to long right. So this right leg to the right rein and letting go of the left side is typically harder. But I don't even think about inside leg to outside rein until I have inside leg to inside rein, equally in both directions. Because that tells me the back has released. That tells me that the hyoid and you know all these things that are like creeping up into like, well, I can't get a flying change, you know? Uh, or you won't let me ride them up to the flying change. That's because the throughness went away. But what is throughness except flow through the body? And flow means a let go. And so this is like the process. And now he's looking, you know, and he's like trying to like let him go. JJ, yeah. I have a quick question when you were talking about letting like, when you're saying here's the bit and I'll go take it. Yeah. Are your hands a little bit more wide when yeah. you're doing that? Yeah. Okay. Because typically, if I have a horse that's like this in the neck, yeah. I automatically try and emulate my hands. Okay. To like allow, and then when they go down, I can, right? Because this is like, um, like when you like when you lunge a horse that doesn't know how to go on the bit, you put the side reins low. Mm -hmm. As it, like my Grand Prix horse is now being lunged in Germany, on the rings of the surcycle, he's on, not the top one on top of the winner, but he's on the, the first round sur single because he can be lunged like this. He doesn't need to be lunged like that. You know what I mean? Because he's not four years old anymore. Right. And so as you go, as the balance gets more narrow, the hands can go up, up and okay. close, right? So okay. it's like eventually you have the range in one hand. Yeah. And you carry your, your whip, you know, in one or whatever, you know. Or your sword, and you, and, you, and you turn it like that, right? You, mm -hmm. you know, but it doesn't start there, right? That's Hegel's dialectics. Th if you just practice this, everyone will be above the bit, and it will just be like status states, you know what I mean? And so the horse has to be like here. And so that's where, like, I think about my warm, wet towel of my thighs and my draped leg, because I want to, like, ground the horse, like, here. Okay. I don't want to be here. Okay. Because this is ground three. Right. And when as and it's a difference of like a sumo wrestler and a ballerina on one on a toe shoe, right? Like that balance is ground three versus the young horse. Yeah. And so a horse doesn't know how to stretch. That is a young horse. Right. Even if it's twelve years old and done ground three, it can't stretch. Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta help it learn to stretch because as it gets older, we have to go back to the right muscle ligamental pulley system. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's Walter Zettel, that rest of the soul, you know? And so there's this feeling of like, here I am, go get it. Here I am, go get it. Here I am, go get the bit. So that the bit is always something that the horse is like seeking and going to go get. Okay. You know, but we do, but we can't just be like, this is something where Walter's lessons were like, no, 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 no. You know, and I would always be like, with my students, I'd be like, no matter what you do, keep the flight to the pole. And then it will be the most brilliant lesson you've ever had. But if you're like, <laughs> then it's going to just be like this running around forward. And it's a little too free and open and flat in the back. And the change is going to be late at night. Right? But it's like, definitely ride with this master. You know, but it's your job in your ring fingers to keep the horse chewing in, in that jowl. Okay. Isabel Worth, the biggest thing she talked about, got to get access to the inside jowl. Yeah. And she rides... 
like everything at the Grand Prix. It's everything fat, skinny, tall, short, stallion, mare, like lame, not, you know, like she could do this way. And then it wins the championship. You know, it's like everything. Like in, in, in the German news, it's like the hippopotamus. I can't remember which one that was. And then it was like the giraffe, which was like our niche, which is like, is like, why not is what that means because the breeding was such shit. They're like, why not? And that's when they're like, oh, it's a little bit, you know? Because she, she just gets access. That's what she's amazing at. She's got this like fat magic ass that you're just like, what is going on? And she's just like, and everything else, everyone else is like skinny and perfect. And she's like, oh, no. And she's just like, she has access. She takes the rain, boof. She takes the other rain, boof. It goes like this. She just brings it back and plays it into the off. And you're just like, she's like a magician. Anyway. Totally. Yeah. I need to get access to you to change you. Because my job is to change you, but I can't change you. I have to, you have to first let me in. And that's part of this, like give me your neck. And by giving me your neck, you give me your back. By giving me your back. Your walk is awesome, you're doing great. He throws me off, so like. Oh, he's, and he's so fast. Good. More. 
more. One, two, three, four, five and a half. Getting better. Now collect it. Now I want seven strides from the cone to V. Slow down, collect, 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 collect. One, two, three, four, oh, we see. Good, but you gotta, you gotta keep the camera, it doesn't mean shorter range. Oh. Right, and of course he's gonna throw you off to the off the left tiny leg. He's like, man, you should get off to the right side. Just look at my torso. Good, collect a little shorter in your seat. Yeah, good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I love it. Now four strides again, medium canter, as long as you can, even longer in the neck. Longer, longer, start it out right now. Longer, 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 longer. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more time. Good. Let him canter. Let him canter. Longer stride. Long. That's better. That's better than my legs. That. One, two, three, four, five. Better. And collect it. Good. Easy. From your seat. Not the hand. Here, give it a little rhythm in your hand. Good. Think about in your seat, seat, seat. Left shoulder back, 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 left shoulder back. Good. Yes. Back to trot. Beautiful. Good. And now feel like you can ride a trot. A little more forward now. We're going to count the strides now in a bigger trot. Long step, long step, long step, long step. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty. Again, a little bit more swing. Right, right leg in the rain. You're going to be sliding the hind legs to the right. Good. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Good. And now collect it. Good. And then sitting. Yep. Good. Sit, 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 sit. Rounder circle. So that the counting can be consistent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Good. Walk and a little rest. Good. Long range. Yeah. I would tell you to work on the left side. I feel like I am flying out of control and then I'm mega disappointed because I'm like, shit, the number changed by one. Well, I know. No, and, and like three years ago, I would have been like, I wasn't going forward. And then I went to Europe and I'm like, I am still standing still and actually riding backwards. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and they always would tell me that Americans really ride backwards. I'm like, no, you go forward. And it's like, not compared to Europe. I mean, and then you look even in Akik at our Grand Prix, and our best people we have in the country to show us on the world stage was slightly embarrassing. I mean, they were they were like asleep. The horse and hind legs were asleep, and there was no power. And that's why no one comes to watch dressage because it's freaking boring because there's no, it's not exciting. He's exciting. We gotta calm him down. 
right? But we still need better use of this body. Because as much as your horse is like straight legged, he's like, you know, but they're still in their own temperament, not, they're doing what they want and not what they need because it's the opposite. He needs to take slower, longer steps. Yours needs to take quicker, longer steps. You know, but they're both underutilizing. Uh, they're just still kind of in their own selves too much. And that's, that, that makes sense. They're both at like second level, you know, that it's like, oh, I can almost get the changes. I can almost get the changes. The walk is awesome, by the way. Like days of the week? Well, well, <laughs> or like in your session? No, like in my like, work and work, work and bed. Like, he probably is ready for this day to week easily. Yeah. But it's not always in this environment. Yeah. And like, I've got your home, it's smaller, but it's not enough room to do like this. Yes, yes, yes. And that's the problem. Like, if that's, you know, he, the more he brings in this, I feel like two days, he can eat between after eight days and do more. Like, yeah. yeah, he just needs this more. Yeah. He's so smart. He's so smart and talented, and so are you, right? Like, it's really such a fun combination to work with. And I think that kind of powerful to think about, like, changing your environment to be more focused on it. I mean, that's how I went to Germany. That is exactly, bless you. I mean, that is exactly how I went to Europe. Because I'm like, I have to get to a location that I can like focus in or I'm never going to make the team. Because I'm doing it, but I'm not doing it. Right. You know? And then if you, you're right every day. Because you don't strike me as I'm like, oh, I rode like two times this week. Like, you're not that girl. You're like, I mean, I was like, you don't think you're riding enough days? Because like, I'm like, I. Out three days a week, so, you know, right. He does stuff. He's being ridden, which I don't think is the worst thing. Right? Like I think you should also have that versatility because we get we're the opposite of that girl. We're riding the ring. And the horse like, you know. So I love that you do different stuff with them, but like a couple days a week. Because this is amazing. And it's interesting, if two days a week back to back work for him, then I think that's interesting too. Right. And then it's gonna slowly bleed over into he's gonna walk like that also at the horse show eventually. But let's go back into the trunk a little canter. Good. And I would do this kind of work like once a week. Or maybe twice a week. Or start like this and then go into some hard stuff like half pass to the pirouette back to half past, then like challenging stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oops, did you, did you start to swing? Holy oh, shit, did you see that? Yeah. Ooh. Because now it's got like woof, 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 but it's got power to it. And you see his neck and his abs is working. There. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. It's a bigger trot than it was. We're going to need 15 on the left side. But I think that's also, he started to let go in the back. The tail still doesn't move much, yeah. right? Because we gotta look for the clue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So when he's at twelve or thirteen, that's when he's swinging the most in the back. Because this is terrific. He's tracking up, his hind feet are in, which is also hard with Spanish horses. They're always under tracking. Super job. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wonderful. Good. Super. And now let's take that to the chanter. And then we also have to bring that. Ooh, ooh, let's snort. If he needs to trot in another circle and snort that out, that's great. Pet him on the outside side. Yeah. Good. Do you want to
And that, for me, you know, in German, is like, I'm gonna see it and I'll see it at Google, which means pick up the canter on the right rein. Like, I take that little, and I pick up the canter on my inside rein. Why? Because he follows it around. Which is also why, on my horses, I never need a one rein stop. Because they're through. I don't need, I don't need to spin around because it's dangerous. Because I have access to it, you know? Good. Sit long and slow. 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 Good. One, two, three, four, five. Holy shit. <laughs> But as he does this, we, we're going to look at his hops, and they are making this correct circle. One, two, three, four, five. When you were going for your medium canter, you couldn't get five strides in the other direction. Now try medium canter. You're like, could I get four strides? Long, but it's going to actually get slower. Two, three, four, five. We do it again. Roll it long. Roll it long. Longer, not up and down. Because he wants you to go down, up, down, up. And I want you to go long, long, long. One, two, three, four, five. Interesting. Good. Now collect it again. Bend right, gently. Bend it right. Bend it right. Bend it right. Got it, girl. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I like that. Good. Yes. Good. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Good. Back to the trot. Good. Now medium trot. Good. More longer step. More power in your pose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, seven, twelve. Again. A little more trot. Good. A little shorter here. So you can get a little bit up out of the shoulder a little bit more. Good. Push it. Ah. There we go. Push it slower. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Something's happening. You feel it? And it feels like a running like hell. Yeah. You know, it's really hard. I can't feel it. Because then he's going to push you off. Right? Which is why you need him to shorten your rein. Good. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Different. Good. Walk in ten in a second. And he's gonna, he's gonna kick his front leg. Because the hind legs are, yay! Like in some ways I wanna hear that he's, um, what's it called? Four legs. Four legs. Can't get off the So is the, is the steps gonna be like for, in the beginning, because he does that quite a bit and he's gonna pour, right? But then That's when I would shorten the reins. Yeah. And I would get a little bit more in my chair pump. So he can like find, it's too free at that moment, and he's too much on the forehand. Because he has to learn to lift up his front legs, because what horses will do is get wide, because they don't want to step on themselves. So that's why in the young horse class, if the horses aren't strong enough, the judge will be like, wide behind, not good. Because the, the, hind, the hind legs, because they're driving like hell, and the horse is like, shit, I don't want to step on my own feet and hurt myself, and grab a heel, so what they, they go wide, or they slide their hind legs so that as their hind legs are going, the front leg, because they can't go boom like that yet. So that's when I would shorten the reins and let him figure out like how to get his elbow out of the dirt. Do you think for the time being, what I call number two, shoeing him, so that he has a faster breakover will help him? No. No? No. That, I, that's, like my own no that's a great question. No, because they don't want him to get quicker. Because he's already too fast. So would you apply a stronger guy on the apex of the ride? Yes. Or two then slowly slope the way down, try to hold your elbow? Yes. Or you switch basically. So you like like pull the back to slow his to slow his trajectory. Yeah. yeah. You and that's like Odette once said to me, <laughs> like we didn't we didn't talk like this twenty years ago. He's like, you need to ride slower than he wants you to. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't know what the hell that means, but uh, okay. And then I just did it. And now you're able to put, like, you and Suzanne both are like, well, you can do it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's exactly it. Yeah, you're you're yeah. and that's what I want to show you because that's also the canter we're talking about. So I need you to get more in your quads and, like, connect.
connect that more to your lower abs. Like there's this, uh, one second. I want you to think, and you might, you could play on your foot on the outside of the stirrup, and you could play with one shorter in your stirrup to find that. I love this style, I love doing it, but you, I want you to think about the power of that. And that almost as if in the post or in your candor, I feel sometimes like someone took a drill and just like, like drilled my knee on. And then, and that sounds terrible, drilling or whatever. But then from that's like a motion point, that it's like my knee is stable. And then from here, I can like power, power, or soft, 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 or slow, you know. And you're, you've got enough feel. Like I can just kind of be like, I want you to think about your lower abs and your and your quad, like that inner thigh tendon, you know, or that or that feeling here. For the trot, it's much more linear, and you can like I always think about like hesitate on the top, and I almost make like a uh, it's like mm, mm, mm. like there's a little extra like uh. like punctuation. Yes. There's like a period at the end of the top of my post. Does that make sense? And then I can like, what that? Exactly. And then like a booby down because your seat has to also like encourage us back to do something, which is what the stretch is. In your canter, I want the same um, thigh, but I need it to be this is your outside thigh, closed in, and then. And, and keep this so you're a little bit instead like the trot is very like straight in that way but canter needs to be here there needs to be like a little bit of the scissors in your canter seat does that make sense and then from there instead of going like you've got a very good rhythmical aid but it goes too much into your hands so i want you to think about like that same rhythm that you're like come back come back come back in your contact I want you to put that swivel a little bit in your seat because if when you're collecting, you can go, if you're on the right lead, you can go collect, collect, collect. It's going to change this because the, the seat phone kind of is three dimensional, got a lot of things going on. But like you can a little bit like whoop, whoop, whoop with the inside seat phone to change the circle of his camera. Does that make sense? And I always think about the old one. It goes through this. I think there's a video with Fiji, with the circle of the seat of the canter, where for him, you know, and this is again only there's a spiral to the canter, there's like a ta-da to the canter, but there's also like a, a scoop in the canter. So we call that like the circle of the seat, right? There's also this going on, but that's a different dimension, which is a little bit the swivel in, in the shoulder and the seat one I was just talking about. But also, when you have a horse like this, your circle should just be like a regular round circle. What he is great at is he wants to make an oval, but it's an up and down oval. Does that make sense? So he's like down, up, down, up, down. Up. So you're oval, you get kind of sucked down, and then you, so his canter gets more like up and down instead of rolling forward. So you have to make it an oval. But you want to make it like a longer oval. And so you got to like roll out the dough, roll out the dough, roll out the dough. And that's what's actually going to make you slower and longer, which is going to help him not be so up and down. Does that make sense? And this arrow should be on the left side. So this one side, that's okay. You want to try that real quick? Okay. So I want you to think a little bit in four. Okay, so I'm just going to throw a couple things at you, and you guys can play. I don't know if you work with Suzanne too, but like this also feeling in the canter, you can almost think like pedal, 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 because his hind legs need to keep like cantering, and if you just go come back, come back, come back, he goes eh, eh, eh. Does that make sense? So we need him to keep like going long, but come up, not from his neck, but from his back. Yeah. So there you can think a little bit like. Outside inside, outside inside. And that, that also the swivel, but you can also take it down into your stirrups 
you can feel a little bit of your seat bones, but if you don't have your leg scissored and you go to the outside seat bone, you're gonna crush. Okay, so let's practice that one time. But again, like this piece of him letting you in, because the back is up, because the neck is down, huge. is huge. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's the everything. That's the doorway in. Good. And think a little bit like right to the back, right to the back, right to the back, right to the back. And it's in the room. Quick, 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 quick. Thinking about lifting your right hip bone. Good. Closing the knees. Good. 10 meter circle. Turning your body to the right. Good, collective, knee the nab, knee the nab. I'm gonna say now, 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 and I want you on the W to zip up your core and close your knees. That's okay. Good, now, 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 now. Good, there, you feel that? And it's like this growing feeling, that was beautiful. And then he's like, oh, I'm gonna, he's like, I feel your collection, I'm gonna raise you a trick in this. Yeah. Are we surprised? <laughs> no. We know we're on to something when that happens. That's a different canon. Go ahead and turn your right shoulder back. Lift your left shoulder. When it gets crooked like that, I want you to lengthen your left side body. Because you see your left shoulder is low. There you go. And then like, as if you could, look at me. Like reach for something over your left, like this head, there. Because as much as you want to push them off your right foot, you gotta make room for the left back. Because your left side body is your left seat dominant. Good, turn your body more to the right. Yeah, a lot like Erica yesterday in your left hip. There, beautiful. That's very different. Walk inside a beautiful job. Super dumb. So I think about that. 